Kokava's theory of comfort can be applied in all areas of nursing, in med surge, post-op, hospice, home health, skilled nursing facilities, long-term care facilities, psych hospitals, school nursing. We are all implementing some sort of comfort measure, whether we know it or not. There are three main parts of Kokava's theory of comfort. The first, addressing just basic human needs, such as rest, homeostasis, therapeutic communication, and using a holistic approach with all our patients. We're treating the whole being, and most importantly, it is not just the technical care we are providing, but rather the non-technical complementary component of care, which I will provide examples of in a few moments. The second part of the theory of comfort is this idea that increasing comfort for the recipients of care, in other words, our patients, results in this increased engagement in health-seeking behaviors and ultimately leads to achieving goals. So what does this mean? First, let me define what I mean by health-seeking behaviors. Basically, an individual will identify a problem in terms of their health and then seek a remedy for this health issue. When ultimate comfort is reached, the individual will be more willing to implement these remedies that promote the highest level of comfort. The third part is that these health-seeking behaviors result in an increased quality of care and can allow a facility or institution to gather data or evidence for best practices and policies. The best part of Kokava's theory of comfort is the versatility and allowance for creativity to increase comfort. We all have practiced this theory whether we know it or not in all our nursing experiences. Remember the non-technical component I made mention earlier? It is as simple as grabbing that extra blanket for a cold patient to increase comfort, which I know I have done numerous times. Numerous times. Uh, and a side note, we actually have this as an intervention into our insomnia care plans. It literally says, extra blanket for added comfort to promote rest, and this has proven to be very beneficial across the board with all our patients, just an extra blanket. We adjust temperatures in rooms, we bring forth the snacks at night, we do things that aren't technical but they promote comfort we can put music on even a happy and confident bedside manner promotes comfort as it eases anxiety another example of promoting comfort is calling a doctor in the middle of the night for pain medication as well as applying an ice pack to a child who fell at school each and every single one of these examples are all in line with making efforts to increase comfort we are all constantly assessing comfort a big one is always pain management. Let's say that the fifth vital sign is pain. When we ask a patient to state their level of pain from zero to 10, we are assessing for comfort. We will then apply interventions such as pain medication or a hot pack, and we go back and reassess that pain level to check for effectiveness and make any necessary changes if it is not effective. When we are doing this, we're promoting comfort. We all work together as a team individually to promote comfort enhance comfort. We implement interventions, we assess the outcome and effectiveness, and if not effective, we will go right back and come up with new interventions until this goal is met. And that's where creativity comes in. We think outside the box to promote comfort. The goal is always to maximize comfort of our patients. We provide pain management, we ease anxiety with therapeutic communication, we answer questions, we hold someone's hand, we just simply listen. All these are ways we promote comfort on a daily basis. Every day we promote comfort. Every single day, every single shift, we are using Kokava's theory of comfort in some capacity.